What is going on, my fitness junkies? Hope everyone's doing good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with my fitness pal today. So yeah, the, the topic is tracking simplified. Um, and we're looking at my fitness pal today. I know there is a lot of different tracking apps out there, but my favorite and the one I've always used is my fitness pal. And I think most of the stuff we talk about today is going to be transferable to whatever app you're using. So you know, whether you're using, you use my fitness pal or you use a different tracking app um, to, to try to reach your goals, then you're going to get something out of this. So a couple of questions I got before I started recording this um, for, for Michael, who's on here, um, is kind of custom items. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to find specific things. So how to, how to still get certain foods in there if it doesn't have like a certain brand um, that you're, tr that you're eating and still trying to, you know, stay on track with that. Um, and then like creating meals, like kind of just putting your own ingredients in there to be able to create the meal that you're having. Um, so I'll, I'll go into that um, probably at the end, but I'm going to start off with actually creating an example day off of who um, requested this topic. I'm going to use their macros that I've got them on, like their overall calorie and macro goals, and basically create an example day uh, to show how that specific person who who requested this topic uh, can reach their goals on my fitness pal. And so I'll be able to go through the app and show how it's pretty intuitive, but, you know, just kind of talk about along the way, you know, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to, to make things easier on yourself when tracking calories and macros. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the client that I'm doing this for uh, the specific calories and macros for his goals are 2000, 125 calories, uh, 200 carb, 65 fat, and 185 protein. Um, so that's what we're going to try to aim for. And I've got my fitness pal, um, obviously, that I'm using to, to reach these goals. And you know, you'll notice that my goals on there are a lot higher because uh, I'm trying to put on muscle. So um, just ignore like the goals that are on there. And I'm just going to show you how, how to hit these specific goals that my client has. Okay. So Starting off with breakfast, so I'm going to skip like sit setting up my fitness pal and putting your your goals in there because that's really intuitive. I think everyone knows how to do that. Um, but, you know, no matter what you set your goals at, uh, I want you if we're working on calories and macros and like, you know, you have a specific calorie macro goal that we're shooting for. I want you to ignore whatever my fitness pal says and always try to hit the macro and calorie goal that I set you on, okay? And whether you're on a really specific meal plan and you're following it to a T, like who we have on the call right now, um, Michael is like, and a lot of you are, you know, at, if you're following your meal plan to a T, you don't need to track, but tracking is still a really good tool um, to know how to use in cases where you can't stick to your meal plan for any reason, or you're traveling, or you're, you're switching one meal for another, and you wanna still um, figure out if you're in line with your goals, with the calories and macros that we're hitting. So it's still, no matter if you're following a, a, a meal plan to a T or a lot of you are using macros and calories as your, as your tracking measure and you're not following an exact meal plan. So no matter what your case is, this is good knowledge. All right, so we're gonna start with breakfast. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and go to diary. I do everything from the diary because it's got the whole day laid out. Um, and then you go to add food. Okay. So what you want to start thinking about um, when you're, you know, you've got your overall goals with 21, 25 cows, uh, 200 carbs, 65 fat, 185 protein. Um, what I typically try to do is try to get my protein um, kind of prioritized uh, early on, because that's usually what I hear from most of my clients is the most difficult macro for them to hit. And also I think it's the most important macro. So calories is most important, obviously, um, to, to make sure we hit that mark. But I think after that, um, protein is what we want to prioritize and make sure we're, we're at least hitting calories and, mac and uh, protein. Okay, so starting with breakfast, I'm going to go ahead and just start punching some things in. Um, yeah, it's, it's already pulled up there. So I'm going to go ahead and do hard boiled eggs. This is one of my staples. Um, so as you see, the serving size is set to two, two eggs. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do two servings of two eggs. Um, and that's got my macros laid out for that right there. So then it shows up on breakfast. And then let's just go ahead and like what, what you need to start thinking about as well. You know, when you're building out each meal is when you're thinking about your total overall calories, you know, try to try to start thinking about it each meal and, and make sure you're dividing things out pretty equally so that you can hit that goal and not have to like eat a ton at later in the day or, you know, have to overcompensate for that. So hard boiled eggs, I'm going to do is some turkey bacon. One I eat a lot is Oscar Mayer. Um, so serving size is one slice. I'm going to go ahead and do two of those. Okay. So we're starting to put our breakfast together. Let's see. Let's do some Greek yogurt. Really like this triple zero Greek yogurt. So this has got zero added sugar. Um, this is a really good one. I, I really highly recommend triple zero Greek yogurt. It's like, it's a really good strategic snack too. I'm going to talk about a few different strategic snacks, but this is a good breakfast item. So as I'm doing this and we're kind of putting together our day too, you know, one thing you want to think about is my fitness pal or a tracking app can help you kind of put together and plan a day you know, beforehand to try to figure out how you're going to hit your calories and macros. Um, you know, it can be used like that, or it can be used in situations like we talked about, if you're traveling or, you know, you're eating out, um, it can be used to, to kind of punch in what you're eating and still try to fit together and kind of piece together the right calories and macros as you go. Okay. So, um, kind of the way I'm doing it now is kind of planning ahead. Like I would, in the past, sometimes I would do this, I'd figure out my my next day beforehand. I put it all in, and then I just eat all that the next day. Okay, so let's keep going here. I'm gonna go ahead and do oatmeal because we need some carbs in this meal. We're getting pretty good protein in this. The fat is a little bit high, but that's typical for breakfast. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in oatmeal. Sorry, my dog's barking. Okay. Now we've got a pretty solid, almost 600 calorie breakfast. That's a pretty good amount for our breakfast. I think we're going to stop there for breakfast. And we've got, you know, good amount of protein, 50 grams of protein. It's good for a breakfast. Carbs is decent. That's a little bit high. So we got to pay attention to that as we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about snacks real quick. And Oh, yeah, real quick, too, on breakfast, try not to eat breakfast out most of the time, because, you know, try to save your eating out for if you are going to, or if you're having a cheat meal for lunch or dinner, just because that that's just going it, to, it's a good rule of thumb. I mean, if you're going to eat out, you might as well like eat out at like a lunch or, or a dinner for the most part. I feel like breakfast is just not a good way to use your cheat meal. Um, and it's, it's best just to, you know, these are easy foods. I feel like no matter what's going on, you can have breakfast at home pretty easily or even in like a hotel or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and punch in some snacks. Talk about that real quick. So let's go ahead, you know, protein shake. I want you guys basically always put that as a snack. Um, so we're going to do a protein shake. Another really good snack is going to be rice cakes. I really like these white cheddar rice cakes. We're going to do three of these. And the reason I'm putting these in now is like a protein shake. You're typically, I usually have you guys do one of those like every day, at least once after workouts. But typically you guys, I have you guys eating the, or having a protein shake every day. Um, so I usually just kind of add that in. So I kind of see where I'm at with my protein and everything. Um, but also like one of my really staple strategic snacks is those rice cakes. Uh, so I went, went ahead and put that in there. So let's move on to lunch. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show a couple of different examples for lunch. Uh, I'm going to, I'll do a whole day and we'll, we'll do a lunch where say you, you know, say you're traveling or you're on the go and you had to have Chipotle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a Chipotle bowl. 
for lunch. And we'll go through the whole day like this. And then I'll, I'll at the end, go over like a more regular day. If you're able to just cook everything and, and be able to find um, what you're doing there. I'm going to not do the steak bowl. I'm going to do the chicken burrito bowl. Um, sometimes, guys, if you can't find um, like the type of bowl that, that you're getting, you might need to put the individual ingredients in Chipotle. So what you can do is like, or some restaurants even, like you'll have to put the restaurant and like I've had to do this with Wendy's or Chick-fil-A. Like sometimes Chick-fil-A, for example, like you'll have to go Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets, put it in, Chick-fil-A waffle fries, medium size, put it in. It won't always have the exact meal already boom laid out. So you got to kind of put together everything that's in that. So with the chicken bowl, sometimes you'll have to put in the chipotle rice, chipotle beans, all that stuff. So just be aware of that. I think I put it in right. Oh, nope, didn't add it. Oops. All right, guys. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is a pretty standard one. We're just going to kind of ballpark it with that. Okay. And what we're going to start seeing at this point, like usually with your breakfast and lunch, you know, once you're getting a couple meals in there um, and you're starting to see the carbs and the protein and the fat that's in each of those meals, it starts to get tough to just like automatically add those up in your head. Um, so usually, you know, when we're getting a couple meals in there, um, we're going to go ahead and look at the nutrition. So hope you guys saw what I did there. You're just going to go to the three dots, go to nutrition. This is where you can see your macros that you're at for the day and your calories. So right now with just breakfast, lunch, and a snack, we're already at 124 protein. We're at 136 carbs. We're at 48 fat. So remember our goals for the day are 185 protein, 200 carb, 65 fat, and 2125 cows. Um, and we're at 1441 calories right now. So that gives us an idea. All right. That that allows us to, to figure out what we can have for dinner and reach our goals. So for dinner, I'm going to go ahead and do chicken breast. Okay, so serving size and number of servings, it's one ounce in there. You may you, you always have to pay attention to the serving size and number of servings. Um, so we're going to go with six ounces of chicken breast on there. Might have to change it. We're going to see where we're at with our calories and macros after this. Um, but like I said, right now, it's as if we're planning ahead for the next day. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys at the end of the video um you know obviously if you're trying to figure out like grams and ounces and cups and all this like you know you either need to be using kitchen measurements um and, or using it and or using a scale like a um a food scale which i have and i use every single day it's not as hard as people think you know it's right when you're preparing it or you're eating it you can use it right there it's super quick but if you're not doing that then i'm going to show you a way at the end here um, to be able to still eyeball it, you know, that's not the best way to do it, but eyeball it and still get a good idea of what you're getting in. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Dinner. We're going to go ahead and do um, brown rice. Let's just do one serving of the 100 grams. I think that's equivalent to a cup. Rice. Um, black beans. Let's go ahead. I think we'll probably have to change the serving size. We're going to go with one and see where we're at. Let's see where we're sitting for the day. We're going to go nutrition. So we went over on our protein. So I think we're going to take down the serving size of chicken. Um, carbs were getting pretty close and fat we went over as well. Um, so let's go back. And you can edit serving size here. I'm going to go with four ounces chicken. We went overboard there. 
think we're going to increase the rice. Or increase the black beans. Okay. Let's see where we're at now. Getting closer on protein, carbs, we went overboard. Fat, we're right on the dot. Um, so what we're going to do, take away some carbs. That's an easy one. There's so many levers to pull with taking away the carbs. We're going to take away one of the rice cakes. Let's see where we're at with our calories, too. Protein, we're close. Carbs, we're close. Fat, we're almost right on the money. And we're close with our calories. Okay. So if we really wanted to get exactly right on the dot, um, we'd play with it a little, a little bit more, but that's honestly, you know, within five to 10, you know, the carbs is within 12, but within five to 10 um, grams on everything is what you want to shoot for. And even though we're over on protein and carbs uh, and we're right under on fat, we're, we're under on calories. So you know, even though we're over on those macros, we're a little bit under on calories. So that's okay. You know, we're, we're pretty dang close. On what, on what we're shooting for here. So I'm going to go ahead. That's, we're going to say that's the example for that. We got within a hundred calories of the goal and we're super close on our macros. So that's with, you know, still having a Chipotle bowl that day, you still got really close with your macros. You actually were under on calories. So another thing I wanted to say is don't wait till the end of the day to track in general. You know, you don't want to like, be at dinner and you're like, oh, let me try to track everything and figure out what I have to have for dinner. You know, try to try to start tracking after those first couple meals, like like we talked about, um, and figure out where you're at for the day or plan ahead. All right. So that's the example day. I'm going to go back and change the lunch. Oops. I'm just there we go. We're just gonna have a more normal lunch. Let's say ground turkey. Let's see like one and a half serving, see what we get to. Let's do like quinoa. Let's do like pinto beans. Let's see where that got us. Protein close, carbs super close. Fat almost on the dot. See where we're at calorie wise. Calories were almost right on the mark as well. So yeah, that's giving you some ideas how to do that. So let's say, you know, with that same day, we had to eat out for dinner. We're trying to figure out what we could hit. So, you know, say you had all that normal food, like kind of a normal day up until dinner, um, but you got to eat out. It's just, you know, the scenario is just, that's the case. So Looks like we need a decent amount of protein, a lot of carbs, and not that much fat. So let's just say like it's super late and you just, you know, you lost track of the day. You got to get some something real quick and you had to go to Ch uh, Chick-fil-A. Um, so let's see. Chick-fil-A. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 12 count nugget and then see where we're at. So fat, we were already almost on the mark with fat. Our protein is still pretty low. Um, see where we're at calorie wise. Calorie, we got a little wiggle room. So that's going to be tough. You know, in situations like that, we just got to try our hardest, but I think Chick-fil-A has fruit. So we're going to go play fruit. Chick 
display fruit cup. We need two of those. Boom. And look at that. We we got pretty close. You know, in situations like that, it's tough. You know, we got pretty close calorie wise. We were a little under on protein, more than we would want. Um, but we got pretty close carbs and fat wise. I'd probably just go ahead and like with that, like call it on that. Maybe you could have got another four pack of nuggets or something and got a little bit closer protein and carbs wise, but that probably would have put us over calories and fat wise. Um, so I probably would have just stopped there. So those are some examples there. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. Just kind of me going through. Sometimes it helps just you know, see me go through it and, you know, it gives you some ideas how to intuitively go through and figure out your day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my computer screen and show you guys the portion size guide. Let's see here. Cool. So this is just like the most simple one that you could possibly use. Um, as you see here, like a fist is going to be like a cup size. Um, so th these are just ways to, if you don't have a food scale, you know, super kind of drastic scenario where all you have is your hand to be able to use as a measurement and you're not even eating at a restaurant or anything like that. You're just trying to figure it out um, on the fly. Then th these are good rules of thumb. So kind of the size of your palm, three ounces, uh, the size of your thumb is one ounce. So all this stuff right here is going to be helpful for you. And then if you're just trying to come up with, you know, protein sources or carb sources for protein, I, I think just really try to stick to the basics on those, like with chicken breasts, like white meats, you know, white fish, um, lean ground beef, make sure you're getting like 93% lean ground beef or lean ground turkey. Try to make those your kind of main protein sources along with eggs or egg whites or literal protein powder. For carbs, I went ahead um, and pulled up this carb list. Try to just really prioritize complex carbs. Okay. And I can send this to you guys if you want. So let me know if you want this list. Um, it's pretty helpful. I've sent it to a lot of you guys. If you're using pretty much just calories and macros to reach your goals, and you don't have an exact plan. Um, but for the most part, you know, almost completely avoid simple carbs. We're wanting to really prioritize these complex carbs. And this is just a good list of like the serving sizes <clears throat> of these complex carbs um, that are really good things that you can eat. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions and you're watching the replay, please go ahead and let me know. And please comment replay if you watch this and if it was helpful. And yeah, let me know if, if you guys have any questions on this or if you have topic ideas. I got a really good one from Michael who's on right now uh, for, for one soon that I'll talk about. But yeah, comment replay, comment if this was helpful for you and comment any topic ideas you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording guys. Hope it was helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and talk with my, my clients now. So talk to you soon. Peace.